Hey strangers, how you doing? Um, it is Wednesday. Um, I have been looking for some new stuff and I came across something that I think everybody will like and then it was actually suggested to me again today um, by my friend Courtney. So thank you for showing me where your directions are and letting me know how yours went. Um, so today I wanted to show you guys how to do um, the salt dough handprints. Hello everyone. Um, so salt dough handprints are very, very simple to do. Um, they include only flour, salt, and water. Um, it, the main recipe calls for a cup of salt. So hopefully you have like a, a bigger thing of salt in your cupboard. Um, I'm going to half the recipe because I actually made some earlier to make sure that I knew what I was talking about when I did this video. Um, and because my little ones were over earlier. Once a video, I'm telling you. All right. So what you need is for the regular recipe, you need a cup of flour, a cup of salt, or excuse me, two cups of water. Two. Oh my goodness gracious. It's only seven o'clock, huh? Two cups of flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of water. There we go. Um, the directions that I looked at are in milliliters and grams. So I converted them. And the closest that you can get is two cups flour, one cup salt, and one cup of water. So basically, I just have this big mixing bowl. I got a clear one so that I could show you what it looks like. And I've got my half cup. I am going to, again, only do half of the recipe of what it calls for because I don't think I have a whole other cup of salt. So I'm gonna do one cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Um, it worked out just fine doing a loose cup of flour, so not a packed cup, just a loose cup. So, loose cup of flour, and half cup of salt. Now it asks you, I messed this up the first time, but it didn't really screw it up that bad. It asks you to mix the flour and the salt together first before you put the water in. So I'm going to do that correctly since I did not read the directions thoroughly the first time. Okay. So the flour and the salt are mixed. And now you need one cup of water, which I need to get up and get real quick. Well, you need one cup of water. I need a half cup because I'm doing half. Okay. So half cup of water. Pour that in and now I just mixed it with a fork um, to try and blend it all together until it was blended enough that I felt comfortable kneading it like a dough with my hands. So you can see it's kind of doughing up. Once it starts to get clumpy, no barking. Once it starts to get clumpy and a little bit harder to stir, that's when you can go in with your hands. I highly suggest taking some flour and rubbing it 
on your hands so that it doesn't get completely stuck. Hi, Amy. Hi, Dad. So we're doing um, salt dough hand prints today. Basically what that is, I didn't really describe it in the beginning, but what that is is it's, it's kind of like a stepping stone how you can put hand prints in cement, but this is um, just something that you can make with the ingredients that you have in house. Um, so the ingredients of the bigger recipe are two cups of flour, um, one cup of salt, and one cup of So after your dough gets to like this point, you're just gonna knead it, which um, for those of you that don't know what that means, you're kind of just, um, here I'll show you. Visual is better. So you're just kind of going like this to make sure that everything is mixed together. You can put a little bit of flour on your table so that you can get the kneading process all good to go. So when you're done, it'll kind of look like, like a sugar cookie dough. Um, you, it's not too sticky to the touch. Um, it is still a little sticky, but not to where it's gonna be getting all over your hands. So after that, what you need is you need a cookie sheet. I suggest parchment paper um, so that you can easily get it off your cookie sheet once it's done cooking. It may or may not stick if you don't put anything on the cookie sheet. I don't suggest putting oil on your cookie sheet though um, because of the ingredients in here, it might moisten it. Um, and the other thing that you need is a rolling pin. I have mine here. This is a cool rolling pin that you can get on Amazon. Basically, it has um, these things on the end that you can roll off. It comes with a purple one as well, but I don't have that one on here. And what they do is they allow you to measure how, mm, how much width you want uh, for your cookies or your salt dough in this case. So this, I believe, is, let's see, a quarter inch? Yeah, I think it's a quarter inch. So that way you know how big your cookies are when you're rolling them out. So the reason that you need your roller is to make sure that you're consistently rolling this out and you don't, if you don't have a roller, you can use your hand but you wanna make sure that you're trying to get it as flat as possible because that's the point of having the hand prints on the salt dough is being able to see those distinguished prints. So once you get, yes, you do need one, mom. Um, once you get your dough all rolled out, you want to roll it out to about, it says like a centimeter to a centimeter and a half, but I did the quarter inch um, and it worked out fine. So you'll roll it out. I'll just roll it out here on my table so that you guys can see what it'll look, at, look like when it's rolled out. bit of it is getting stuck there on my on my rolling pin from when I did this earlier so and then when you roll it out you want to make sure that you shape it into the shape that you want it to be finished in so for the sake of this video we will do a circle okay so I'll show you guys what it looks like hi Amanda all right so this is our dough Okay, nice and circle, quarter inch thick. All right, so Jackson, no, 
No, A. No, no. No, no. So what you're going to do is you are going to just have your family or your kids or you, um, and you're going to press your hand wherever you want, nice and firm. You want it to be deep enough to where when it cooks, you can see what you did. So I'll press down here, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So if you're doing kids' handprints, I suggest that you help them because they're probably not going to be able to press down hard enough. And you know how they are with handprints. If you have them, you know. All right, so that is what my hand looks like on half of the recipe. All right, so when you're, I highly suggest that you put it on the cookie sheet before you push your hand into it. I didn't do that because I'm not going to be baking this one just yet. But I will show you what it looks like while it's baking. So in order for this to be done, it has to bake for three to four hours on the lowest temperature that your oven will let you do. So the lowest temperature that my oven will let me do is 170 degrees. So I am currently in the process of baking two. They're not done yet. So I made one with the Littles handprints, and then I did one with mine and my daughter's handprints. And they've been baking for probably about three hours and 20 minutes. And so they're gonna bake for about another 40 minutes. The directions say that you want to make sure that the bottom of it is hard when you take it out of the oven. So you'll lift up your parchment paper and you'll kind of press the bottom of it, make sure that the bottom of it is hard so that you know that you're done and you can take it out of the oven, let it sit until it cools. And then after it cools, you can paint it. Um, the person that I saw painted it with acrylic paints and it looked really, really cool. What she did is she painted a different hand a different color so they did the mom the dad the two kids and the dogs adorable and they painted like the dad red the mom blue the daughter pink the son a different color blue the dogs were like yellow and orange and it turned out really 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 cute so tomorrow when this is all nice and cool or maybe later tonight I'm gonna paint them and I'll let them dry and I will show you guys, I'll post pictures when it's done so that you guys can see what the final project is. So yes, it does take a long time for this to bake. I know that three to four hours kind of throws some people off just a little bit. However, I do suggest that you try it because it's a super cheap project, it's a super fun project, and it's something that you can use as a keepsake. Um, a lot of people are doing like funny things with the salt dough, such as um, like lockdown 2020, um, I survived COVID-19, things of that nature. Um, so if you are looking to add some humor to this situation that we are all stuck in right now, then I suggest you look at some options that they have. Uh, before today's video is done, I'm grabbing some stuff, if you can't tell. Um, I want to show you guys another project that I have stored away in the closet that I'm going to probably start working on again. So that you can see some more options of stuff that you can do that's time consuming and therapeutic. So... I have here a paint by number, okay? So I'll get nice and close so you can see all the little dinky numbers and letters that are in there. So I had started painting this little chair <laughs> and then I stopped because I don't even remember. It's been in the closet since then. Um, 
So the paint by numbers come with a paper form of the directions and it has the I'm trying to think of what that would be called because it's not really the table of contents the legend there we go the legend or the key Yes, the, the color by numbers, the whale that you have in your room, Rachel, that was a paint by number um, that I think I did that. I think it was me, but it was a so long ago and it was really, really fun to do. So it also comes with a little paintbrush so that you have something that is nice and fine so that you can get into those little areas. And it also comes with a bunch of paint, obviously. Um, so you can hook them or unhook them. Let me see if I can get that to focus in. There we go. So you've got 17 and 18 and then 53 and 55. Those, I believe, are... Um, for the company's purposes. But you can hook these together or you can take them apart. As you can see, these two just fell off the end when I was showing you guys. Um, let me pop one of these open and see. Okay, so I'll pop one of these open and see what it looks like right now. <laughs> wow. I am impressed. I have had this kit probably four years, maybe four years, and I have not touched it. And I was able to dip the end of this into the paint and it's perfectly fine still. So, hooray for quality. <laughs> um, let's see. This is Paintworks by Dimensions. I know that I got this at Michael's. Um, they do get a bit pricey, but as anything else, you can get them on sale or you can get them, um, excuse me, from with a coupon. So it's very, very, very easy to get a hold of these. I know right now it's kind of not, but I wanted to make sure that before this was all over that I dug this out of the closet so that you guys could see what a cool option this is. So here's like the size of it relative to me. I think it's a 16 by 20 if I had to guess. And it is a river scene with a cabin in the woods and on the shore are these two Adirondack chairs and then there's a cabin and some some brush some trees and all that good stuff which is my go-to I love 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 fishing in the lake and all that stuff so this is what I chose. I know they have um, some that are more simple for anybody who has trouble seeing. Um, if you are the type of person that has difficulty with fine motor, um, I highly suggest that you take like a, a rubber band, a ponytail. This is some, you can find them in the store, but this is just a, a good idea. Um, I'm sure Lisa, my cousin who was watching earlier, I'm sure she has a ton of ideas of different adaptations for fine motor, but this is just one of my, one of mine. So if you put a ponytail holder onto your paintbrush and scoot it down after tightening it, it gives you a bigger hold. And then you can put as many as you need so that you can hold on to the paintbrush and not worry about having to hold on to a super tiny little spot. Um, as far as vision goes, um, there's not too much that you can do if you have trouble seeing small spots. Um, 
the only thing that I could recommend is if you get one of those lights, the makeup lights that have the magnifying glass with the light on it, and then you could adapt it that way if you'd like to. So yeah, that was all for today's video. Um, again, I will paint the handprints that I have in the oven. Hi, Aunt Kathy. Um, I'll paint the handprints that I have in the oven right now, and then I will show you guys how they turn out. Aunt Kathy, you would probably love to watch this video because you've got some little grandkids and it would be so cool. We did um, salt dough hand prints today that you bake in the oven. So your little grandkids could uh, be a part of your rock garden. And we could paint them up. All right, well, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will uh, hopefully be able to dig up another idea to show you guys tomorrow. All right, thanks. Stay happy, stay safe, stay informed and stay home.